What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. A few videos ago, you guys will remember, I tried to resurrect this big compactor here. This is a tow behind vibratory roller and I'm in a hurry to get this thing going even though it's been sitting for 30 years. I'm trying to get it going so I can use it to finish building the pad over here for my new dream shop. So, a few videos prior to the roller video and I'll try to link these down in the description if I remember. Uh, we cleared this whole area and I am planning on putting up a dream shop here, if you will. I've been planning this for a long time and it's coming together now, but I'm kind of under the gun. They want to start building on it here uh, the week after next. So that leaves me this coming week to get this whole thing done. Well, I don't want to have to go out and rent a compactor when I have one that's quite capable of doing the job just sitting here. So in the previous video on the compactor here, we obviously, we went through the engine, we confirmed that it turns over, we got fuel up to our injectors, but we just could not get that thing to fire. It's a three cylinder Dutes diesel engine, and uh, they're very reliable engines, but the starter was just not spinning fast enough to get this thing to go. So I finally got a replacement starter back from the shop, and uh, we're ready to toss it in and hopefully get this baby going. All right, so in the last video, uh, a lot of people noticed that these glow plugs are up here, that this engine does have glow plugs. And uh, I didn't show it in the last video, but uh, this wire was hanging out here like this. And I did connect this to the, the hot side of the system and let them go for a little while. And there was no drop in voltage or anything. They weren't drawing any power. And I've got the first cap off of here now, and I can see why. These are just super corroded. They probably weren't making any contact at all. So I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull all these caps off of here. We'll clean up all the contacts. Can you guys see how dirty those things are? No way those were making contact. All right, well, the other thing I want to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull this glow plug out and this injector, and we're just going to go ahead and see what everything looks like down in there. That'll give me a chance to peer down into the cylinder. I'm also going to put a few drops of oil down in there since we've been spinning it over so much without any starting. I want to make sure the cylinder is good and lubed up. And also, you know, an engine like this that's sat for so long, oh, what can happen over time is the rings will actually seize into the, the rings on the piston. So as the piston moves up and down, the rings are not expanding to fill out the cylinder walls and create more compression. So we could be having low compression here. So one little trick you can do is throw a little bit of oil on each one and that'll bring it up enough to start it. And then after it starts and runs a little bit, those rings will unseize and uh, expand. Let's see if I can't get this thing out of here. Ooh. Yeah. There we go, there's one. Alrighty. Well, the glow plug is in one piece, that's good. And we have a Bosch number here. This is a Bosch 0250-200-020. And Hmm. Well, it says right on here, 9 to 5 volts. So, yeah, me putting 12 volts to him probably didn't help him out any. Yeah, see, I do believe that this glow plug is ruined. Uh, it's got a hole in the ceramic there. 
and it's uh, pretty well deformed here around the shaft so yeah I don't, I don't think that one's any good there we go just needed some more leverage This one doesn't look too bad. Oh. Well, I don't know if the camera's focusing on it, but there's the tip on the injector there, and I don't think it's clogged. It doesn't appear to be clogged. So, yeah, that's good. All right, so I have the injector out of there, but you can see, well, I hope you can see, all that junk laying down in that bore. Now, that was fine when it was all contained and everything, but when I backed that injector out, all that stuff became loose. So I need to blow that out of there and the best plan I can come up with is stick the uh, air nozzle down inside the, in the glow plug hole here and that should pressurize the cylinder and blow the dirt out of the injector port. All right, well, hold your breath. That worked pretty well. So under here is the drive line. I covered this in the last video here. This shaft runs down here into a, uh, a set of pulleys and belts and that spins the vibrator inside the drum here. So one thing that never even crossed my mind, you know, we're trying to get the engine to spin faster, take all the load off of it. I don't know why I just hadn't even thought about that, but uh, several of you pointed that out. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna un Anyway, I can't get this thing out of the way, so it's going to be sitting there contacting up against the flywheel, or the crankshaft rather, so we'll uh, go ahead and zap these things off of here. Trying to get the fuel tank out of here because I opened it up and it is rough. I think it's currently frozen in here still. All right. Well, while I'm waiting for that fuel tank to thaw out enough to come out of the uh, the dirt it's encased in, we go ahead and pop this electrical panel off of here because uh, we've got some work to do in here. So I pulled this uh, control panel apart here and the wiring is just real dandy. You can see there's a, a house wiring nut right there. So this has been professionally maintained for sure. We're going to disregard all that stuff and pretty much build us a new harness and just simplify things a bit here. So in the first video on the compactor here, there was lots of people making suggestions about my ratty starter leads and yeah, these things were pretty much toast. And if you paid attention in the video, I actually only tried cranking this thing a few times with these crappy leads. You can see they got green death all through them there. There's big, huge pieces of the uh, coating missing off the wires down through here. 
So I'm sure they were full of tons of resistance. But actually, very early in that video, I switched over to these nice, heavy uh, battery leads here. So we should be getting plenty of power to the starter. That was not, not the issue that we had. I finally got a new starter in for it. We're going to get that installed right away. Okay, we got the new starter all installed now. I don't have the electrical straight yet. I'm just gonna test the starter here. I got a little jumper wire on here just so we can bump it and see if it spins this thing over faster. You guys ready? Contact. <laughs> Definitely better. Definitely better. All right, well, it turns over. Uh, it's definitely faster than it was before, but still not super fast. But uh, I, I think it's plenty fast enough to uh, get it started this time. We've got more smoke coming out of the muffler than we had last time, so that means it's actually making some compression and, uh, you know, combusting a little bit of that fuel. So you know me, I'm going to put the cart before the horse. I can't, I can't wait. There's a chance we could get this thing running here, and I, I've been dying to hear this thing run. So... Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the temporary tank, throw it back on here, and hopefully we can get this thing fired up. I don't know if you guys can hear or not, I got the fuel pump plumbed in and running. I'm taking my torch right now, I'm gonna heat up this uh, intake here, which will make hot air inside of the intake, so when we crank it over, it's gonna be drawing in hot air. And then uh, I'm also gonna hit it with uh, a little, little whiff of ether and uh, hopefully that's enough to make this thing go. All right, well last time I tried to spray the ether with the torch still going, that proved to be a bad idea. So we'll, uh, we'll separate the two this time. Give her a nice little snort. You guys ready? Contact. <laughs> Oh, it's really close. I think I actually gave it a little too much ether. All right, take two. Ready? Contact. Oh, it tried to go. One more time. Take number three. You guys ready? Contact. Ah oh, man, it was really close, really close. We'll give that starter a break for a second and uh, try it again. You guys ready? Contact! Alright, it is not a fan of that ether, so we'll quit using that. I just put just the teeniest little touch in there this time and it's still not happy about it. Alright, is this going to be it? Ah oh, man, I think our battery is getting a bit weak now. I'm going to uh, throw the jumpers on it for a bit. All right. Well, I had the jumpers on there for a while and the truck running. Uh, hopefully we charged up the battery enough. I'm going to heat this intake manifold up again. Give it every, uh, every bit of help that we can here. And uh, I'm pretty confident. I think it's going to go. All right, you guys ready? What do you think? Fingers crossed. Let's go. Contact. <laughs> Man. 
starting to get aggravating here. It's really close, like it really wants to go. We'll see if I can give it just a teeniest bit of ether while it's cranking so it doesn't ether lock. close dang it I'm not burning up another starter this one was like 390 bucks and uh, I know a lot of you said well there's no reason your starter shop couldn't have rebuilt the old one and uh, you're right I, I did some digging around I mean I knew that but I uh, kind of pressed the issue with them and they said well all the cores that they needed to rebuild the starter were buried in the snowbank somewhere so yeah by the time I ended up getting this new one in, they uh, all the snow was probably melted. All right, one more time. Come on, baby. Contact. <laughs> So close, so close. Try to give it some more throttle here. I thought I had it on wide open, but apparently not. Come on, baby. Last time, you can do this. Contact. <laughs> not staying running for some reason. I don't think we're getting enough fuel from our injectors or something. I got the throttle pinned. So hopefully it stays on wide open this time. And hopefully this baby runs. You ready? Contact! <laughs>
set on mid throttle right now and uh, I'm just gonna let it run here for a little bit get warm and one of those injectors that's hanging up might kick in here shortly they were pretty crusty but I'm not uh, an injector specialist I, I pulled them out and looked at them but I was afraid to try to dismantle them uh, and, and clean them properly I really don't know the proper way to do that that's one of the things I need to learn guys <laughs> I'm excited that was a uh, that was a pretty good cold start too huh there was a lot of smoke on that when it first started up I am awfully excited about this we are uh, one giant leap closer to getting this thing functioning and that's good because boy I need it in a hurry it, it doesn't seem to be running very hot at all I mean yeah I can put my hand on the muffler without scalding myself so it's not uh, running crazy hot or anything. It seems to be pretty happy doing what it's doing. We'll get a fuel filter for this thing, change the oil here, and I'm gonna pull the cover off. I'm gonna pull the cover off of the belt drive here that runs up to the vibrator in the, in the drum there and see what's going on behind that because this thing here should be really easy to turn. This is what that drive shaft yoke was attached to and I can't even make the sucker do a revolution so i think it might be dragging in here this panel's kind of dented in so that could be our issue all right so on today's agenda we are going to be focusing on wiring i've got uh new cable here we can make up some nice new leads because the the good set that i have on there now is actually from the auto car that i just had them laying around so that's why they got put on there <clears throat> so this is the harness that was on there i cut all that old crap off of there it's no good um we're going to simplify this thing as much as possible it had an ignition before like you know with a key and there's just no point in that for something like this you don't really need a key to steal it so no point in having a key so i grabbed one of these cat type uh starting switches so this is all that's going to be sticking out of the control panel and you turn it back for heat and that should run the glow plugs and then bang to crank it over since it's a mechanical fuel shut off we don't need to worry about this thing uh, having a run position so all this has is heat and start I have not figured out the glow plugs just yet I'm kind of waiting for this video to come out for you guys to explain to me what I need to do to <laughs> get the glow plugs working that's one of the big benefits to uh, putting a show out like this on YouTube is I get the opinions and uh, the knowledge of all of you guys out there that actually know what you're doing instead of just watching me fumble around in the dark until I figure it out. So, uh, yeah, let's get to this. So 
only the second time I've used these crimpers. I think there's a bit of an art to it. Of which I am still learning. Ugh. But they do make positive connections. Yeah, not too bad. It's a little uneven. I think this is actually a bit bigger than these crimpers are rated for, but it does the job. First connection. All right, so on the simplest of systems like this, we're trying to just make it the fewest wires possible. This starter lug here, which is actually on the starter relay, is gonna kind of act like our power distribution point. So we have power coming in from the battery the next thing we're gonna make up is a lead, a hot lead to run from here up to the control panel for the starter switch. And then we're also gonna have another lead coming from the alternator back here onto the starter lug. So really three wires will be all the hot wires on the machine. And then we'll have a couple more up here at the control panel. So I'm not sure if the camera's focusing so that you can see them, but there's actually little labels on the back of the starter switch here. So our hot wire coming from that battery lug, or from that starter lug rather, that, that wire is gonna come right here to the B terminal. That should be battery. And now there's a C and an S terminal. And I gotta use the meter to figure out which one's which because C could be crank and S could be start. Um, I, I don't know what else they could stand for, but. One of these would be good for the glow plugs, one of them is going to be good for the starter. I'm thinking that the S is going to be the starter, but I do not know that. Alright, this connector here is going to be the uh, hot up to our switch. It's cold today. Dang it. I mean, this didn't do the best job here. This is the wrong kind of solder. That's all I had with me. It's acid core. Uh, so, but anyway, I do that. So it just kind of locks all the strands together and it clamps down better in these kind of clamps. Yeah, that clamped in there a lot better now just because that little bit of solder.
if I did this right. Yep. Good as gold, baby. Now that guy is going to go to our glow plugs. All right. Well, there we go. Our switch is completely wired in. Um, I'm just taking a gamble on these glow plugs. I, I could be dead wrong about this, but I was reading somewhere that like for light bulbs, you can series light bulbs up on a 24 volt system so that you don't blow out a 12 volt light bulb. So I've already put 12 volts to these glow plugs when I was trying to get the engine running. So if I already damaged them, they're already damaged. Not a big deal. Um, so yeah, we'll just try this and see if anything happens. Should be a glow plug. Oh, no, we got something's happening. I put a bunch of dielectric grease on these uh, glow plugs. So, cooking the grease off of them. Oh, these planes are killing me. All right, well, the wiring is all done now. Everything is hooked up, should be ready to go. Uh, I didn't wire in the fuel pump because the fuel pump is supposed to just be temporary here. Um, I was going to order a replacement lift pump, but uh, I put that on hold until I figure out what's going on with this counter shaft and the drum. But uh, yeah, go ahead and touch the lift pump off. And we're going to see if the alternator charges. Contact! <laughs> Okay, well, bit of a bummer there. You know, I hoped we were gonna get lucky and the alternator was gonna work, but unfortunately it's not. Can't wait to not have to work out in the crap again like this. Be able to just pull something in the shop and not drop your impact in the mud. It's gonna be great. All right, you guys ready to see what's behind door number two? Oh man, yeah. Well, what do we have here? We've got this big pulley here. This goes inside the drum there where there would be a big counterweight and that flails around and causes this whole thing to vibrate like crazy. That is on a heavy skew there, if you can tell. That has to be, oh, you know what? I don't think that is intentional. Look at that. It's jammed in down there. That's, that's not good. That's a problem. Rat row. I don't know how that could have bent or broken, but it appears that it maybe has. That could be a game changer. That's not good. That would be why this is hard to turn, I'd imagine. Yeah, there ain't no pulling on that. Back here, well, you can see this thing's on a skew too. Man, some neglect happening here. This should have a through shaft, and this should be kind of like a centrifugal clutch. And you can see there's bearings exposed here. That's not good. Those should be uh, sealed bearings that are permanently lubricated. 
and if they were at one time they are no longer so that's not good that would need rebuilt son of a diddly this isn't looking good should have pulled this thing off first yeah Well, that's not even thinking about it. You know, I can't be sure, but it looks to me like something's really screwed up in there. So, this may be the end of the road for this unit. We'll know we have a good running engine out of it, if nothing else, but uh, this could be a real bummer. I think we're going to have to pull the drum, or rather, pull the frame up over the drum, would be the easiest way to do this. I think, and there's that I think thing again, the only thing we should have to do, knock all these belts off, and then two bolts like this on either side, and the whole framework should lift right off. Well, what is it I always say? Nothing to it but to do it. First off, I would like to say to the astute of the observers out there that uh, this video was shot in a chronological nightmare, so if things appear to be a bit goofy and uh, the sequencing of what's going on here, it's not you. It's probably the way I edited this video. Anyways, I picked this thing up to set it over here where it's a little bit more flat to do what I want to do next. So the guy that gave me this roller told me that it made the earth shake. But it would also sound like the gates of hell were opening up when you were running this thing. He said it made ungodly amounts of noise. So it doesn't surprise me that there is something catastrophically wrong potentially inside of that drum. But anyways, let's go ahead and see if we can't lift the whole framework up off of here and uh, figure out what exactly is wrong in there.
There we go. One good thing we do have going here, at least I will say, all three of these really nice big heavy belts, they seem to be in good condition. Still usable, so that's good. I'm sure these are probably 150 bucks a piece. Belts are not cheap these days. If my calculations are correct, I'm 99% sure this thing should just lift right up off of here and the drum should stay put. So I guess we're about to find out. Okay, well there's the drum separated from the framework there. And uh, yeah, so we got this side here. These have some sort of a, uh, apparently these things are designed to uh, have some play in them all the way around. I can't remember what type of bearing that's called. I've installed a ton of them though. This side is the same way, it's able to be wiggled around, but also I can spin this shaft now. But it doesn't feel like it's connected to any kind of counter shaft in there. So probably have to remove all this stuff and take off that whole flange here to really look inside the drum. But. problem right there counter shaft is snapped completely off dang it I hate to see that that's a serious repair Well, this is pretty much worst case Ontario here. That's supposed to be a through shaft. That is the actual counter shaft that spins inside of this drum. Try and get you some light in here. So that whole shaft there that goes through the center of the drum, that's this piece right here. And you know, there's my hand compared to it. That's a pretty serious hunk of metal to break in half, but uh, it can be fixed. I don't know if it's worth fixing, but it can be fixed. Uh, I guess I'm gonna pull this whole flange off of here now and just start having a good look here and see what's really going on.
right, this is a very unique design here. I've never seen anything quite like this. This is a giant ball bearing right here, and it's sitting inside of a big race. The whole, whole barrel there is a race. And uh, I guess that's supposed to keep the shaft steady. While that's spinning in there, that whole thing is going to be one big support rather than putting all the force on the small bearings here in the shaft. So, interesting design. I've never seen anything like that. It could be standard in all vibratory rollers, I don't know. I've never had a drum apart on a vibratory roller, to be quite honest. But uh, let's see about getting the other side off now and see if we can't get this thing pulled out. Okay, these nuts right here, um, I don't know if it's the proper term, but I've always been told these are called AN nuts. And they have a little locking tab here. You bend down into the slot to engage the nut, pretty much lock it in there. A lot of times they're only retained by that and not tension. Yeah, this one's just like that. Not tight at all, just locked in place with that ring. So in order to get the counter shaft out of the drum here, I have to remove this bearing housing. And I believe it's on some sort of a tapered collar fit here, which is a little different. And if I get it apart, I'll be able to show you. But uh, I have a big puller that would in theory work for this, but I don't have any of the proper hardware to connect it here with me. So I'm gonna have to make a run. Um, but I have, I have an idea that I'm gonna try first. All right, now I'm not a huge fan of this idea. You can get a little overzealous with a machine like this and uh, do some damage, but I'm using these belts here that should soften the uh, jerking motion. And I'm gonna go pretty slow and just rely on sheer power rather than uh, like swinging at it or anything like that. Yeah, so the other thing is this thing is a spherical bearing, or at least I think that's the term. And I can kind of tell from the cab if I'm pulling on it straight or not because it's going to move back and forth on me. So yeah, hopefully this works. I know there's a lot of you at home right now going, well why don't you just run and get the proper stuff so you can use your puller? Well, if I have to I will, but if I didn't get a little creative out here and I just ran and got stuff every single time I had to get something like this done. I'd never get anything done. I'd be constantly running places to go get stuff. Now, once I have my shop here and everything's built, it should be a bit easier. I should be able to inventory a lot of this kind of common stuff. But right now, I don't have the uh, time and place.
go. Oh no. Some roller bearings fell out. That's alright, we can fix them as long as we can find them. Well, we got more bad news here. So these three rollers that fell out of the cage here, I cleaned them up and hopefully you guys can see the uh, the coating is all gone off of them. They're very pitted up from rust. And uh, yeah, they're, they're, if this was together, I wouldn't have known and I would have run it. And there's a good chance it would have lasted for quite a while. But now that it's apart, I really hate to put this back together like this. Uh, and knowing that things are not good in here and you know of course we could replace it but this is a big bearing this is not a cheap bearing to go ahead and just replace so I have to uh, assess the cost of everything here because this at the end of the day this is a tow behind roller that's outdated and not really uh, worth a whole ton even in good working order all right I don't know if the other side was like this as well, but right here, there is some wear in this shaft. And that could very well be the reason that it snapped off on the other side. If it had identical wear, or maybe a bit worse, obviously. Um, yeah, that's the weak spot, that's where it broke. Or where it would have broken, rather. Look at that guy. That's medieval looking, isn't it? This sucker's heavy. Let's try to get this broken piece of shaft out of this thing so that we can take this whole kit to the uh, machine shop and see if they can fix it. Let me rephrase that. I know they can fix it. Let's see if I can afford to have it fixed.
Well, I don't like it, but it might work. It was moving, but I'm bending my puller. Dang it. Yep. Well, my homebrew puller here isn't up to the task. Well, here we are, uh, definitely at a crossroads in this project. Got the shaft out of the drum, as you guys saw there. Got it loaded on the truck here. Um, I have to go get a different puller to get that stub shaft, the broken piece, out of the pulley and other bearing assembly. Um, but I wanted to get this video finished up and put up to you guys just so you guys have an update and see what's going on. The reason I said we're at a crossroads with this project is because this piece could be prohibitively expensive to repair. It may not be worth fixing. So I hate to get to that point in any project, and of course this can be repaired. It is fixable, but whether it's worth fixing or not, um, kind of debatable. So the upside is I used to work for a machine shop that fixes stuff like this on the regular, and uh, they're definitely capable. and. Uh, I used to work there, so maybe they'll cut me a break. The flip side is, I used to work there, so maybe they'll not cut me a break at all. Hard to say. Fact of the matter is, I have a shaft to repair first most. Uh, secondly, there's four, five, maybe six bearings that really should be replaced. Two of those are going to be pretty darn expensive bearings. We still have to get a lift pump for the engine, and we have to get an alternator that actually charges. So, you know, that right there, 100 bucks. Uh, the bearings, I'm thinking, you know, one to 200, maybe even three, depends on how expensive the big bearings are. Getting the shaft fixed could be an eight, $900, maybe a $1,000 plus repair, I really don't know. So, uh, I worked there, I never I never quoted anything, I don't really know what any of that stuff actually costs. And then, uh, not to mention, we've got all the inflation going on, so uh, nothing's getting cheaper, that's for sure. Anyways, I'm off to the store to see if I can scrounge up a good puller so I can get that thing apart back there. There's two bolt holes in the big pulley that I need to pull off of that shaft. Uh, unfortunately, the holes are all stripped out, so they don't do much good. I could get some really long bolts and possibly put nuts on the backside and may end up going that route, but uh, we're going to go to the store and see what we can't scrounge up. But I will leave you guys here. As always, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. It really helps me out. helps grow the channel and doesn't cost you guys anything. And uh, if you haven't already, be sure to tickle on that subscribe button so I can see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.